What's going on YouTube? It's your man, House Bond Brian. In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys five common objections that you're gonna hear from sellers and how you can deal with them. Yes, five. They probably ain't got the right people helping them. Look, I'm 31. Here's the best advice I give my teenage friends. It was easy. What can I tell you? It was hard? No, it was easy. So coming in number one, one of the most common objections most investors are gonna hear is, I have to think about it. Guys, this is the kiss of death. If uh, you get this objection, I have to think about it, I'm pretty sure you failed to do one thing, which is setting upfront agreements and expectations. When you talk to a seller, you should get an upfront agreement that if uh, you guys discuss the property uh, and review all the details and you can make an offer that they're in a position to make a decision today so that's one thing but let's say you didn't do uh, the upfront agreement and get the you know set the expectations up front what can you do if you get stuck or derailed by this objection I have to think about it this is how I normally answer that objection um, Great, Mr. Seller, I completely understand this is a big decision that you need to think about, but uh, I think two heads are better than one. What is it that you have to think about specifically? Is it me? Is it the offer? And try to box in the objection and really uncover the real reason for the stall because I have to think about it. Normally, that's just a stall to buy some more time. So. The next one is the price is too low. I'm pretty sure everybody has heard that. And we know every seller thinks their property is worth more than it really is. Um, the best way to do that, instead of proving the seller wrong or why their property isn't worth what it is, is to ask questions and get them to devalue the property in their own mind. So what does that look like? Well, Mr. Seller, I can really appreciate you know you wanted more for the property and i wish i could pay you uh more but let me ask you a few questions mr seller uh when was the last time you've uh done updates or remodeled the kitchen and bath have you done any updates in the past five years uh to these areas of the property um and a lot of times the answer is no all right uh, mr seller how uh, old is the the uh, ac unit when was the last time it was replaced what about the roof? How uh, long ago was it since you got a new roof? So these are questions that uh, help the seller to understand that there's a lot of fees associated with remodeling the property. And you can always bring up the point of closing costs on the front end, closing costs on the back end when you sell it, and also holding costs um, that you're going to have with the duration of the fix and flip. So these are some ways that you can overcome that objection and bring down the actual perceived value in the seller's mind. So coming in number three is I have to talk to my husband or I have to speak with my wife. Guys, this is another one that you shouldn't have if you set the upfront agreement and expectations that all decision makers will be present, okay? And there's no outside uh, people that's going to influence the decision making. But let's say you drop the ball and you didn't get the upfront agreement. Um, at that point, Mr. Seller, I completely understand this is a big decision. Um, and you definitely want your spouse involved. My wife would kill me if I made a big decision like this without her. Um, how about you get your uh, your wife on the phone or how about you call your husband on the phone and you know while we're here, three heads are better than one. Uh, we put our heads together and we go ahead and uh, work this out and come up with an agreement that makes sense for everyone or maybe there's any questions that I can be here present then I can answer and then we can work out together so that's another way to overcome the objection I need to speak with my husband I need to speak with my wife so number four is I have other people coming to look at it in very competitive markets you might hear this uh, a lot um, I have other people come and look at it with the competition. Guys, there's no reason to be fearful or, or nervous about this one. If a seller tells you that they have other people uh, coming to look at the property, just ask them a few uh, more questions. Okay, great, Mr. Seller. Um, how many people do you have uh, coming to look at the property? Um, and you know, when are they coming by? All right, And just kind of fill them out to see exactly what's going on. And you can always tell the seller, all right, great, Mr. Seller. You know, I'm not the best with like the bidding wars and everything like that. Um, if uh, you go ahead and let the other people come, can you please just 
do me a favor and give me a call last so uh, I have an opportunity to you know review the offers and see if I can match those offers or possibly come up with a better offer uh, can I get that uh, from you Mrs. Seller is that fair um, and that's how I usually overcome the objection I have other people coming to look at it because um, if you can get that agreement it's always best to have everybody go before you and you be able to seal the deal as the last person all right so last but not least is i need to speak with my attorney guys if you don't come across competent or confident with the seller many times they might throw a flag and say i need to speak with my attorney guys don't get startled it's okay what you do not want to do is discourage them from talking to their attorney because it seems like you're trying to hide something so simply put, if a seller says that, you know, Mr. Seller, I, could, I completely appreciate that. Um, let me ask you, is there anything that I was unclear about, anything that I didn't really explain uh, clearly or that you want me to go over again? Um, as far as your attorney, you can definitely, you know, review this with your attorney, give your attorney a call and hey, you can give them my number, tell them to give me a call if you have any other questions. Another thing you want to do is you want to ask them how long will it take for them to uh, contact their attorney? All right, because you don't want to just give them a big time span and do that. Uh, typically, they should be able to get that reviewed in 24 hours and get back with you. So ask them how long it's going to take and don't discourage them from talking to their attorney. Um, put it back on you for being able to clarify and explain everything carefully and that shouldn't be a problem. So those are the top five objections that we get when we talk to sellers and those are how you crush them. So if this video was valuable to you guys, smash the like button, share, subscribe. See you guys in the next video.